are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good evening and welcome to As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. Thank you for tuning in and this is ex an exciting show for a couple of reasons. One is that I have a great guest back to again make me look like an absolute expert about all things dog. And secondly, it's the anniversary of my first show. So this is really exciting. I have with me tonight Laura DeMaio Roy and she is the owner and head trainer and main cook and bottle washer <laughs> for LEDR dog training. And we're here to talk tonight about a topic that's really important to me and I, I've wanted to do something about this for a long time. So this is my opportunity. So thank you for allowing that. One thing that I know happens as we're entering the holiday season is that people think about what would be a really awesome gift for someone in their life, their child, their sister, their husband, their wife, their mother, their father, somebody, their next door neighbor. And often what that decision ends up being is they decide they need a dog. And so that is cool. Dogs are wonderful. Obviously, I'm very much a fan of dogs. But I think that it's critical to make some really careful decisions about when to get a dog, what dog to get, where to get the dog from. And even though I believe that, and I decided to bring Laura in to talk about it and make it all official. <laughs> so thanks for coming back. I love having you on my show. Oh, this thank is awesome. you. I'm really excited. And um, what I really want to talk tonight about is some of the things not to do and some of the things to do when picking out a dog for yourself or someone else or helping someone make that decision. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so the biggest thing you want to start looking at is what do I want from a dog? What type of dog do I want? What does my life look like? And how can a dog fit into that life? Um, you know, something that I know is typically people don't change the, their habits and their life based on the dog that they get. So you want to get something that already fits into what you're <laughs> already doing. A lot of people say, oh, I'm going to walk 10 miles once I get that dog. and you know, they're still walking, you know, the same they were before, which is none. Uh, and then they got a crazy dog in the house that needs lots of exercise. So we want to first think about activity level, breed, and not just the cutest dog you've ever seen, um, you know, and having to have it just because you saw it on television. Um, there's a lot of different types of dogs to look at for families. Um, I like labs for families. Goldens are lovely. You know, a lot of people like these high energy breeds and, and that's great. If you're a hiker and you love to bike and you love to go kayaking and you're going to bring your dog every everywhere, get yourself a herding dog. But, <laughs> but if you're going to watch television when you come home from work, a shepherd's going to tear your house apart. So, so, you know, you have to really think about lifestyle when it comes to dogs. Um, and, you know, there's a lot, people say that puppies are a blank slate and, you know, that, but in reality, if you get a Sheltie, it's probably going to bark. And if you get a Husky, it's going to want to run. So if you don't provide that activity for that dog, then they're going to be a challenge to live with because they're not getting their needs met. Absolutely. I remember being on the bus and someone was telling me how they'd gotten this beagle and they were safe because they'd seen it in a movie and it was so cute and how they just hated dogs that barked. And I thought, hmm. Beagles were bred to bark. Yeah. <laughs> so if they had done a little research, if that person had done a little research into the breed they picked, they would have realized that that was a dog that really, really loves to bark. Right, right, exactly. And, and yeah, genetics make a big difference in dog. And even if you're going to get a rescue, which is awesome, get a rescue, still look at what breeds that dog might be. Or if you're feeling like, I really want a Labrador, go online, find a breed specific rescue to find that dog. So maybe we should talk about where we should get yes. the dogs. Um, so 
So re rescuing a dog is great. I have a rescue of my own. He's a two-year-old. Um, you know, we got him as a two-year-old. He's seven now. He's an excellent dog. Um, and looking at a rescue is a great idea. I love breed rescues. So breed rescues, typically, the dog is going to be typically in a fostered setting. So they're going to already be in a home. So you know a little bit more about the dog than you would if you just went down to your local shelter and picked it up. Um, you want to kind of know what you're getting into with dogs. Um, so, so having a little bit of knowledge is, you know, a great idea. Unless you're willing to work with a trainer or you have a ton of dog skills, just go on down to the shelter, pick one out. But you want to spend some real time with them because uh, they don't and they don't typically present the way that they might um, in your home if they're in a shelter. So give them a cooling off period too. So rescue is a great option. Um, if you're very set on going with a breeder, make sure that you're really doing your research. You don't want a backyard breeder who had a beautiful dog and they decided to mate it with another beautiful dog just because they were pretty. Genetics really matter. So you wanna know what lines your dogs are coming from. Is this a dog that's a working Shih Tzu dog that you're getting or you know, is it a field hunting lab? Uh, that'll kind of give you an idea of their activity le le levels for their dog. Um, so do your research. Good breeders will have a take back policy so that your dog never ends up in your shelter. Um, they'll be support for your, the entire life of the dog. So you should be able to call your breeder and say, hey, I'm having this issue. Have you seen this before? Can you help me out with that? Um, you know, you want a breeder that's really invested in the dog. Um, so do your research. It should also be hip and elbow tested. Make sure that their vet checks it. You know, it's vet checked, everything like that. Where you don't want to get a dog is going down to your local pet shop um, or getting one online. Um, you want to meet the mom and you want to meet the dad if possible, but that's not always possible. And you want to see the home the dog has been living in. A lot of people go to the pet store and the dog is really cute in the, you know, up in the window. Um, but unfortunately, you're voting with your dollar there. So you're, you're, what you're doing is keeping puppy mills alive. So you may be you know, what in your head says rescuing that dog from the pet store. But in reality, it's just putting money into pockets of our, that are going to continue to breed these dogs in terrible conditions. And uh, I run into a lot of issues where those dogs are very hard to potty train because they've been living in their own excrement. And it's very difficult when they get home to, to be able to know that they can't go to the bathroom inside. So just some, another thing to think about. That's awesome. <laughs> very not awesome that it happens, but awesome that you've given us that, that information. <laughs> Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about is sort of two pieces of the same puzzle, when to get a dog and what age of the, particularly children in the house to get yeah, a dog. Yeah, yeah. So with children, um, I always recommend if you've got young children, get a rescue dog that is already an adult, at least a year old, and you know its temperament with children. Um, you know. If you get a puppy and you have young children, it's a very, it's a big challenge because you have to manage the fact that that puppy is a land shark and it wants to bite and nip and your children are going to run around screaming and make the, you know, incite the puppy to chase them. And you're just going to be dealing with a really big management task that, you know, most people aren't up for the challenge of that. And it can be very stressful for both the parents and the children and the dog as well. Um, so I always recommend if you've got really young children, you know, zero to four or so, you want to probably start with an adult dog. Um, you know, even just a year old is perfect because they're out of that bitey puppy stage and then you already know if they're good or not with dogs, uh, with children. Um, if, you know, if you want to get a puppy, you just have to know what you're getting into with puppies. It's like a full-time job some of the time with some of these little puppies um, because they require a lot of attention. You're going to be going out in the evenings. So to that point, I'm not a big fan of getting the dogs and puppies in winter because I don't want to go out in the middle of the night in the snow no. to let my puppy out <laughs> multiple times. Um, so I, I'm a big fan. If you have some time off in the summer, you can devote, you know, a couple weeks maybe of vacation to getting your dog. That's a great time. Um, a lot of people like to get them, like you were saying, um, over the winter uh, on the Christmas holiday and give them as gifts. But that's a tough time for a puppy or a dog to adjust to a new home. If you're getting an adult dog and you're pulling them out of a shelter, that's a big life change for them. So being in the chaos of all of that great family time can be very stressful for a dog. So, um, you know, right between that Christmas and, and New Year's isn't the best time to, to be bringing an adult dog into your home. And the same thing with a puppy. You've got to devote a 
lot of time to the puppy. And if you're busy with your family and doing really fun holiday stuff, you might not be able to devote the time that the dog needs at that time. So I always recommend if you're gonna go ahead and get something over the winter, you kind of want to wait until the, that holiday season is over or do it well before the season um, is coming. So if someone wants to give up a, a dog as a gift, um, we talked about this before the show started, give a gift certificate, put a stuffed animal under the tree that says this is this is a placeholder until yeah. you know after the holiday and then we'll go we'll go get the and dog pick or pick the dog together. up none of this cardboard box with a couple holes and a little puppy yes. under the tree not a yeah. good plan everybody needs to be on board with a dog you know the whole family is going to be responsible for the care and well-being of that dog so you can't just spring that on someone for a holiday and and that's why a lot of times um, animals get returned uh, you know come february march now the puppy's a little bit bigger and the person didn't necessarily really want it in the first place and now this dog is going to the shelter and it's so unfortunate. So you want to do some planning and bring everybody and make everybody part of the process. Right, a true surprise. Oh, I think grandma really needs a dog. Well, She's yeah. lonely. <laughs> and grandma has no intention. She's all busy doing all kinds of stuff and doesn't yes. want a dog at all. Yeah. And then she's got this dog and it's harder because of course it, she isn't unfeeling. And so mm -hmm. that that's just so important and people just need to really hear that because mm -hmm. It's not just, um, it's, it's just, I mean, you'd, you'd never give a person another human. <laughs> you'd never give them another human to take care of without asking them. So yeah. um, I think that's, that's really good. We touched on the, and the, what type of dog to get. Um, and that's so important. And I, I was thinking about, you know, someone who might look at a dog and think it looks just gorgeous in the show ring and not realize mm. how much money and yeah. time goes into caring for that dog it's not just a brush and a comb yeah maybe it has to go to a groomer every six weeks or four weeks yeah 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 like a lot of the poodles and you know those types of you know non-shedding type dogs they definitely have to be groomed a lot um and they and a lot of dogs just have a higher energy level than people understand you know um i have a friend who isn't a big walker and he got a bulldog and it was the perfect match for him because the dog just lays around all day and that's perfect for his lifestyle. And then I have a lot of people that, you know, they get a lab because they're really nice, but they don't realize that, you know, this lab at, between the age of eight weeks and like three years old is very, very high energy and they need to be not just walked, they need to be mentally exercised and physically exercised. Yes. And that's what people don't understand a lot about um, dogs is that mental component is so critical for their well-being. You know, you can run a border collie forever, but if you start doing mental games and make them work mentally, you can tire them out much more quickly and a lot of dogs are destructive in the house because they're not getting their needs met um, you know they may be getting their two mile walk a day but it's that for for some of these dogs is just the beginning you know that's just a warm-up two miles of walking so um, yeah so breed is very important go out and actually see those dogs in people's homes uh, call the breeder say hey can I go out and talk to you know do you have anyone I can talk to you do you have dogs that I can meet or go to the breed rescue and say hey can I meet some of the dogs that you have so you really know what kind of dog you're getting when you bring it into your home and you're prepared for it. Um, and financially too, you know, another point about the Christmas season is a lot of people are financially strapped at Christmas because they've overextended, you know, getting gifts for everybody. Um, and the cost of the dog or the adoption fee is just the beginning as far as dogs go. You know, if you get a puppy, you're going to the vet minimum three times right off the bat and then training. You know, if you skimp on training at the beginning, you pay for it for the rest of the life of the dog. Um, so you want to make sure that you have that money for the dog and then also have lots of money in the bank for the, the continued care of it. Because and also those unexpected... Yeah, vet bills. I, I mean, you know, this is... People don't think about it with, with guides, but I mean, we had a hospitalization this year and it was through... No one was at fault. It just happened. Mm -hmm. And he was in the hospital for two days and it was an enormous bill. Yep. Um, and that's with a dog who who doesn't play in a backyard and get to eat all sorts of really scary <laughs> things. And, you know, so in some ways you'd think it would happen less. But yeah. I, I've talked to so many people who've brought home, you know, they got their 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 dog, and all of a sudden, you know, it ate some. Oh, crazy my, thing in their house. <laughs> yeah, my friends have a Rottweiler and that dog has been to the vet. It's it's about six months old now. It's been to the vet maybe five times, thousands of dollars in vet bills and just up front. Um, so you need to make sure you have that money tucked away in case of an emergency so you don't have to make any really tough decisions in the moment. And also I think that that touches back to the whole thinking it through yeah. and it being a whole family thing. If you have a, a new dog in the house, you don't know what, even if it, whether it's a puppy or an adult, mm. you don't know that dog's proclivities, what mm. it likes to eat and what it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And 
I have learned over the years that there's really nothing that a dog would look at and not see as a potential something to eat, <laughs> depending on the dog. Yes, especially labs. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> no, especially labs, yes. Um, and so, and if people aren't going to choose to use crates and may not realize the importance mm -hmm. of a crate, especially when they're not being able and to management. watch the dog yep. in management, you know, a perfectly good dog can make um, choices that I actually truly believe are not the dog's fault. Preventable. If, 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 right. Yep. I remember the very first guide dog I ever got, I was 17 years old, and the instructor said to me, and I'll never forget it, he said, this is a dog. <laughs> she's highly trained. She's very smart. She wants to be good. She's a dog. Don't set her up to fail. Mm -hmm. Make, have covered garbage cans in your house. Don't leave things around because mm -hmm. she's not perfect. She's not a machine. Mm -hmm. the, more, the less opportunity she has to, let me rephrase that, the more opportunity she has to make the right choice, yep. the better off you're going to be. Yep. And I mean, I still say that to people and I still don't have any open garbage cans in my house. <laughs> yes. um, because why, I mean, he may not do anything about it, but why give him that, why give him that, that, why put that out there as, yeah. a, as a teaser for him? Yeah, I always tell people management is 70% of puppyhood, training is only 30% because <laughs> there's so much you can do to prevent bad habits from forming just right off the bat. And even, you know, dogs you just bring into your house, like new rescue dogs that might be adults or other dogs that might be adults, um, you know, they don't typically blossom or feel comfortable in the house anywhere from two weeks to six months they could take before we call what we call blossoming and their real personality <laughs> comes out. Sometimes they're on their best behavior for the first couple of weeks and then we get lax. And then they do things that we're like, oh, he's never done that before, but that was there all along. So we want to set them up for success. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's why the holiday season also isn't isn't the best time when you've got your Christmas ornaments everywhere and the wrapping paper and the kids' toys and all of that uh, can be a challenge for management for making sure that the dogs aren't eating anything that they should they, they shouldn't <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's, that's that's definitely a it, it can get it can get interesting. That's for sure. Yeah, um, we've talked some about the importance of training, and um, and and I'd like you to go a little bit deeper into training and socialization and what does that really mean? Yeah, and and and. Um, what is the importance of doing that in a timely fashion for the dog? Let's start talking about puppies because okay. obviously they're the ones we can have the most control over. If a puppy comes into your house at eight weeks old, you're, you're starting at the very beginning of its life. You're yeah. not catching up. Yeah, so puppies have a critical socialization period that lasts from three weeks until approximately 12 sometimes up to 16 weeks or so. And that's when they're most primed to have a good experience with something and then take that good experience for the rest of their lives. Um, so that period is the most important as far as, as far as setting a puppy up for success. You can teach them to sit and down and stay and all that whenever you want, um, but getting that socialization in, which means uh, making sure they walk on a bunch of different surfaces so they're not nervous. Make sure they walk on something wobbly. Um, having them see other dogs and have good experiences with other dogs. And that doesn't necessarily mean meet every single dog. It mm -hmm. means see that they exist. Um, going out and seeing people, especially, you know, the, the problems I run into a lot with dogs is a fear of men or a fear of hats or a fear of hoodies, um, things that can be scary for, for little puppies. You want to see all sorts of things, walkers, canes, um, you know, all types of people, children. If you're thinking about having children, even if you don't, it's critically important that you socialize the puppy with children at a very young age so that you don't have run into issues um, as they get older and you have your own children, because I run into that issue a lot too, because dogs don't see children as, as adults, as people, they, because they run around and they scream and they're erratic. Um, so you really have to take care to have good experiences um, with those things and have them see other animals and cats and traffic and whatever you're going to do in your your life that dog needs to do in those first couple months that they that you have them home and that doesn't mean quit after 12 weeks <laughs> but those are the you know those are the most critical at weeks for that puppy to start with um, you know puppies can learn you know I just got a, a puppy at five and a half weeks I was working with her on sits and downs and come um, my 12 week old puppy can do leg weaves and she can do you know sits automatic sits at the door and walk nicely on a leash and and do all sorts of stuff they're totally trainable there's this old myth that you should wait until six months to start training your dog you should start training them the second that you get home because you're either training or untraining your dog no matter what you do um, so we want to be creating good habits right from the beginning um, so that's puppies as far as bringing an adult dog into your home you want to give them a little bit of a decompression period um, so you want them to be able to feel comfortable and relaxed in the house 
Now that doesn't mean let them get away with anything. We want to, but we want to set them up for success and then not demand too much from them right at the start because a lot of these dogs are coming from the south or a poor situation where they may have been wandering around on their own or they may have been in a bad situation. My dog was chained to a deck for two years. It took me six months to help him overcome his fear of people, fear of cars, fear of pretty much everything because he never lived in a house before. Um, so, you know, you want to be really patient with those dogs and patient with yourself too. Um, so, but you can start the training once you feel like the dog is ready and and settled in their environment, then you can start training with them too and making sure they go out and see different things. But don't rush it with an adult dog. Let them have lots of good experiences, which means not neutral experiences. Neutral experiences, I saw that. Good experiences, I saw a scary truck and then I got chicken from my mom and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> that's a positive experience, right? So that's, that's what we want to be setting our dogs up for, especially if they're a little bit fearful. We want to do lots of positive reinforcement. And I want to touch on something that I remember from, um, I forget where I learned it, but <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's true and I'm going to ask you about it. Okay. Um, so puppies, when we first, and, and I know that this isn't necessarily true of adult dogs, but for puppies, it can also, you can also start too much too soon. So mm, that's you true. get your puppy at eight weeks old and you decide to go to the 4th of July parade. Mm, yes. Your puppy's eight oh, weeks too old. too overwhelming. Yes, yes. Okay, so I should have been a little bit more clear about that. <laughs> um, so, so we want to have good experiences, and that means small positive experiences. So we're not going to take them to the Fourth of July parade, but we might have a couple friends over instead to have to, and we might maybe have them bring a hat and a noisemaker. So you're introducing them incrementally into things that they can handle. If you find your puppy starts licking their lips, they're turning their heads away, they're getting frightened. You've done too much. Um, so you want to back off, and we never want to push a dog to approach something. This goes for puppies or dogs. A lot of people will be like, don't be afraid, and they'll try and, and pull their puppy up to, especially like stairs or um, you know people they're afraid of. We don't want that. We want them to be able to approach on their own terms. Because Could you imagine if like you were afraid of snakes and I said, oh, just come here and I'll grab your hand and I'll put it on the snake. <laughs> you know, That's not gonna make you less afraid of snakes. Um, we, we want you to be like, okay, I, I can watch the snake for a little while. Okay, I see that that one's not scary. Okay, I think I'm good with that. Um, so you want to make sure that you're you're doing things small increments, um, and some dogs are more capable than others. You know, I've seen lots of dogs that could go to a Fourth of July parade. You know, at 10, 12 weeks or so, and a lot of dogs that would be way too stressed out and overwhelmed. There with are that. dogs that should never go to a Fourth of July. Parade. Yes. I mean, that's just just like there are people. I mean, <laughs> dogs. I think that's what we sometimes forget is that when I'm talking to people, and I've and I've, I mean, I've I've got almost 30 years of guide dog mm -hmm. experience, and I still sometimes forget that, you know. Um, what we do as humans doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we do is just ridiculous yes. to them, I'm sure. Yes. And it's also really important to be consistent. And I, mm -hmm. and I know it's so hard because they do stuff and it's so cute. Mm -hmm. And or, I know. or, you know, you're like, oh, I'm just, I'm so sad and I want to just cuddle with my dog on the couch today. But I don't want them on the couch But I don't the want them tomorrow. on the couch ever again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah. No. Yeah. Um, or it's you're... It's so hard, but it's so important because... They are generalists. If, mm -hmm. if, if, if it's okay to get on that chair, mm -hmm. then why can't I get on this chair? I remember being, I, apparently I talked to a lot of people about dogs on the bus, but this woman was talking to me on the bus years and years ago. And she's like, I'm so angry with my dog. I gave it one of my old shoes and it chewed a new one today. <laughs> and I was like, really? And then you should smack yourself on the head yeah, with a newspaper. Exactly. <laughs> because like, wow. And, so and how, can your to your dog, <laughs> how can your dog possibly understand that if the old shoe is okay, then the new shoe isn't? Uh, I mean, I know. Um, so I just, I, I think that when, when we, our dogs, dogs are very smart and they certainly can discern lots of things, but to presume a general, generalist sort of overview. If you don't want your dog playing with your children's stuffed animals, don't give them stuffed animals mm -hmm. for yeah. their own toys. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because stuffed animals, a stuffed animal is a stuffed animal, you know. It, it, so I find that that, when I talk to people sometimes, that's their biggest frustration. And it's hard to be consistent. It's hard to yeah. be consistent. And, and dogs, you know, if they get away with something once and then 90 times they don't, that that's okay. <laughs> they're, yeah. still, they're still going to try. Yeah, I, I always relate it to somebody playing the slot machine at the casino. You're going to keep pulling the lever. If you win once, you just keep pulling that lever and trying to, to win. And it's the same thing with dogs. They get away with it. They're like, well, if I just try one more time, maybe they'll give up. And then people do give up and they aren't consistent. And then the dog learns that if they just push harder and try harder, they can get what they want the way that they want it. Absolutely. Yeah.
So it's, it's, consistency it's, is critical. It's really interesting. And consistency between family members, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's important. You've got to make sure that everybody's on board with the dog and, and with the training with the dog. Um, or else, you know, you got one person feeding it from the table, the, the other person isn't. It doesn't matter. That dog's going to sit right by the table and wait for food. Yep. You know? <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Um, I want to touch a little bit more on, on socialization because I think for some of us who have dogs sort of get socialization, but um, I think that word can be confusing. Mm. And you did touch on it, but I'd like to touch a little more. For example, mm. um, dog parks are mm. a good example of where people might think, oh, I've got this dog and it seems nervous about dogs, so I'm gonna take it to the dog park so it can see a bunch of dogs having fun. And scare it to half to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I get that a lot. My dog needs socialization, so I'm gonna throw it in with a bunch of other dogs and let it sink or swim. And that's just so heartbreaking for the dog because the dog doesn't, you know, isn't able to express that that's not a situation that dog wants to be in. Um, Dog parks, you know, for certain dogs are okay, but you never really know what you're getting into there. So I never really, you know, I'm not a big proponent of dog parks in general. Um, there are some great dog parks in the area, and your dog might be great with other, you know, dogs, and that's great. Um, but not all dogs are meant for dog parks, and not all dogs are meant for daycare. You know, mm -hmm. the situation where you've got 30 dogs and your dog is just feeling so overwhelmed, um, just like people, you know, not everybody is outgoing and social and wants to go to a party all the time. They'd rather have one or two friends. <laughs> come over and, and hang out um, and, and that's the same thing with other dogs and sometimes when you force other dogs on your dog that might be fearful of other dogs um, you know it creates even more fear um, you know with them so socialization a, a lot of times if I have say a reactive dog I get a lot of reactive dogs um, I'll have them go and just watch dogs for a little while and get little tidbits while they're watching the dogs and say huh okay, when I see these other dogs, something good happens, and then you change their mindset or their conditioned emotional response to what seeing another dog. Instead of them being fearful, they're like, huh, good things happen instead of scary things happen when I see other dogs. So we don't want to throw them in the deep end and let them sink or swim. No. Absolutely. Um, oh, I just had a thought. It just totally, did anyone see my train? My train <laughs> so it's over there somewhere. And it's totally gone. I'll, it'll come back to me, I'm sure. Um, so I, I, I want to sort of re- since I can't remember my thought, we'll just go back to sort of recapping what we've talked about. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about, first, it's really important that if you're going to get a dog of any age, that you first do some research into the kind of dog you're getting. Yeah. So that you don't end up with a dog that was really cute on TV or in the movie, but is really not cute in your life. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that everybody in the picture is on board mm -hmm. and that we're not surprising anybody with a dog that they actually didn't want at all. We want to make sure that we're getting the dog from a, a, a situation that we can feel comfortable about, whether it's a rescue or a breeder or and maybe a specific breed rescue, mm -hmm. certainly not from a pet store where we're supporting puppy mills and, and ba yeah, very or bad online. things. Or that's online. That's important. The new way that they're selling puppy mill dogs is online. Okay. So, so that's, <laughs> that's not a good thing. Um, we want to make sure that we've got, we've got a good match between the age of the dog and the age of the people in our house. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we want to make sure that we don't give the dog as a gift, particularly at the holiday season, mm -hmm. when, the, when life is chaotic as all get out. We want to make sure that we're doing training with dogs, um, no matter their size. I, I'm constantly frustrated by people who have a little dog and say, well, it's okay because it's little. Mm. No, no, little dogs have the, are completely capable. And they're just capable. as smart and they just are. as energetic. Just, they and are. they need everything a, 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 right. a big dog needs. And we need to remember that, I'm running out of time, and I have so many things to remember. <laughs> <laughs> we need to remember that it's really important for dogs to get physical and mental mm. stimulation. Absolutely. Um, I, as always, when Laura's on my show, I want to go on for hours and hours. I want to th thank you for being here today. Check her out at L E R D L E D R L E D R dog training dog. Dot com thank or so facebook.com slash L E D R dog training. And thank you for watching my show. And if you have any comments, you can always email me at, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot my email, a blindwomansview.com, I mean, at gmail.com. And I appreciate your support over the past year and look forward to coming back to you in January. Thank you so much.